This might look like a flash drive, but if I plug it into my PC, I get hacked. And that's because this isn't a flash drive at all. Inside, there's an Arduino with some simple but very effective code that can hack almost any PC. And don't worry, I have variants for Mac and Linux as well. But how is the Arduino able to pull this off? What other variants are there? And most importantly, how can we defend against this? I'm going to answer all of those questions and a few more in this video. The attack we're looking at today is called a bad USB attack, and it works like this. First, we take a microcontroller, in this case an Arduino Micro, and we program it to pretend to be a keyboard. Second, we trick a user into plugging this device into their computer. Third, the Arduino Micro tells the computer that it's a keyboard and starts typing away, doing things like opening up PowerShell, downloading nasty bits of software, or whatever other mischief we want it to do. So step one is to program the Arduino Pro Micro to act like a keyboard. Handily enough, there's actually an Arduino library called keyboard.h that will allow us to do just that. In the setup function, we can run keyboard.begin to tell the computer that we are a keyboard, and then we can begin our attack. We'll start with a short delay to make sure the computer is ready for input, and then we want to open PowerShell. So we'll run keyboard.press key left GUI, which is a constant from the keyboard.h library that corresponds to the special key of the operating system. So for Windows, that's the Windows key. Then we can run keyboard.printr and then keyboard.release all. So we've now simulated someone pressing Windows and R at the same time, which pops up this little run programs dialog. After a short delay, to let that have a chance to pop up, We'll run keyboard.printline powershell.exe, which will enter powershell.exe into that box and then hit the return key to open up PowerShell. Of course, we'll need a delay again. Let's do 100 milliseconds to let that window open up. And just like that, we're ready to hack. We can now send any command. Of course, some commands require administrator permissions, which you don't have yet. But for now, let's just tell the user that they've been hacked. I have a string here with all of the commands we need to set up text-to-speech and say something to the user. So we can simply run keyboard.println and then pass in those commands, which will type them into PowerShell and then run them. So now that we've programmed our device to hack a computer, how do we get the user to plug it in? The first way, which is the most common, is to make it look like a USB drive and then leave it somewhere where a curious human is likely to come along and plug it in. So I modeled a basic flash drive that's a little big but should do the trick, 3D printed it, and filed off all of the Arduino's pins so it would fit inside. I also got a USB-C to USB-A adapter so the drive will end in a male USB-A plug like this, which is what most people expect. Once I'd glued on the end, I left it out for an innocent bystander to find. Okay, obviously I didn't do that, that's bad and illegal, so don't do it. The problem with the flash drive method is that a lot of people are starting to find out about it, mostly from annoying videos like this one. Another option is to make a fake power brick with our Arduino inside, using an adapter that goes to a female USB-A with a fake outlet connector, and then plugging that into an area where people might be charging their devices. As soon as they plug in their laptop, our attack is unleashed, and there are lots more options too, from a USB fan that actually works but also hacks your device, to creating a charging cable with the microcontroller inside. Now, some of these attacks require a small enough space that we can't fit the Arduino Pro Micro, but we don't really need to. We only need a few of the components to house the program and talk to the computer. So we can definitely trim this down by designing a custom PCB with PCBWay. But before we go to the effort of designing one ourselves, let's take a look at the PCBWay project hub which is at pcbway.com slash project. As you can see, people from the community have made thousands of PCBs with PCBWay, including this design for a small USB attack chip, which is exactly what we need. Now, I haven't gotten a chance to try out this PCB yet, but if you want it, I'll link it below. So head on over to pcbway.com or pcbway.com slash project and check it out. It's awesome. Now that we know how easy it is to create attacks like this, how can we defend our PC against them? Well, we've kind of looked at two different types of attack. The first type is when you plug something in that's only supposed to provide power, 
and it also starts sending data to you. This type of attack is actually pretty easy to avoid once you know about it. Some USB cables can transfer data and power, while others only have two wires, so they can physically only transfer power. If you're plugging into a suspicious port, you can use one of these power-only USB cables to make sure it can't attack your device. And in general, you don't want to use charging cables or charging ports offered to you by strangers. If you do find yourself plugging into a lot of suspicious power sources, you can actually get some of these adapters that only allow power through, and you can plug your device into whatever you want through them. The other type of attack is when you want to transfer data, but you end up getting a little bit more than you bargained for. And for this, the best defense is just common sense. Don't try to get data off of strange USB drives or other drives. It's just not worth the risk. Risk, 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 risk. <laughs> Here's another tech video. You might want to watch it, or you'll end up like him.